Recently, my local grocery store replaced its traditional paper shelf labels with e-ink price tags. I was able to buy the same brand of the shelf labels in the grocery store from eBay for quite cheap. In my previous video, I showed how to install a custom firmware on these devices using an ESP board. At the end of the video, I made a clock which also shows the temperature using the temperature sensor inside of the microcontroller of the price tag. But I think there are lots of possible use cases for these little devices. And also you made quite a lot of suggestions on the previous video as well. So in this video, I will try to cover your ideas for these price tags and as well as the ones that I have. Considering the current high inflation levels, no wonder more and more companies started using this type of electronic price tags, because with this, they can increase the prices of entire store within minutes. So they don't need to hire all those stuff to replace traditional paper price tags, so they save quite a lot of money from there as well. The batteries last a couple of years, and they don't need to worry about to hire someone to replace them. I got mine from eBay and if you are willing to buy these in bulk, you can get quite nice deals. Some of my viewers pointed out that stores usually just throw away these if they stop working. For example, if the battery of them is dead or something. But most of those are working just fine. If you ask the store manager nicely, maybe they can give those for free. These devices are pretty energy efficient because of their ink displays. Even if you remove the battery out of them, screen will continue showing the content. They are perfect for the applications where fast refresh rates are not required, because they are quite slow to update. In the previous video, many people commented me to play Doom on this, and I don't think it's a good idea, because in each screen update you would see flashbacks because of the nature of this place. And if you are not satisfied with this answer, Otherwise the video will be too long. If you want a longer version, I can share it in another video. I've made this GitHub page and you need to download all the codes if you would like to use the tools on your own computer of course. I will put all the links down in the descriptions like always. I have used the files from these two GitHub repositories and special thanks to these creators for their own projects. And if you are interested for their own projects, I will put that down in the descriptions as well. After downloading the files, first you need to go to this folder and the firmware folder in here and install this firmware like the way that I described in the previous video. I will put a link down in the description and also I will create a card over here somewhere. In this firmware, I commented out most of the functions like clock and other stuff from the other video to increase the battery life as much as possible. If you installed the firmware correctly, the screen will look like this. Nothing much on it actually. And all of the things will be controlled by the software that I wrote for the computer. What's important here is the name of the price tag. You see the one which starts with the ESL, dash, etc. We are gonna use this because this is the name of the price tag. So if you go back to the file that you just downloaded, you can start using the script that I wrote. And first you need to install the requirements of course. And I recommend you to use a virtual environment because it will not mess up with the libraries that you already installed. Another option that you can have is distribution. And I created an executable file. You can just click the file. It is only created for the Windows, but the Python file should work on Linux and MacOS as well. And this checkbox is used for the check the changes on the website. For example, if nothing is changed on the website, 
there is no need to upload a new image to the e-ink display and I recommend you to check this one as well and the working background puts the software on the background and you can see its activities on the task manager of course but you won't see any terminal or screen like this and that way you can continue using your computer as usual and if you click the snip button it will open the website that you just entered and you need to go to the location that you liked you can also scroll up and down or sign in etc and after you are satisfied with the location you need to right click and take a snapshot out of it and then it will update the price tag and it will be updated like that and the image will stay the amount of time that you mentioned also if there is a change in the website that you described you can also help me getting this number increased and getting more refresh rates by subscribing as well let's say you want to get temperature data for your city for example you can just paste the website that you find the information from and again update the screen update time and of course you would want uh, most of the time that application to work in the background and click snip button and the website will be opened and right click and take a snapshot just the way that you like and the screen will be updated and your screen forecast is ready the screen will be updated in every hour from the website that you pasted the link in in this kind of displays it is a really good idea to keep the refresh rates as low as possible because that way you would get really long battery lives and that's the actually main reason why these e-ink displays are quite famous for another idea is using it for home assistant and I think these price tags are quite suitable for this application because most of the time you are only interested in the changes of the states so you don't need that much refresh rates an e-ink device would be a perfect match for this need but sometimes the information that you are looking for is not on the top of the page and you need to scroll down a bit or maybe click some buttons and go to the menus and etc this tool also allows that and you just need to copy the link of the home assistant and paste it here of course you need to fill in the amount of the screen update time let's put it 60 as well and work in the background so and click snip button it will open the web page i mean the home assistant page after it has been loaded go to the area that you are interested in and right click and select the area this example really shows us the limitations of these devices because they have a limited uh, resolution so you need to be careful about the location where you need to get the snip from because if it is a really wide area like this it will be pretty hard to read the text and you can see the buttons somehow here and if you know what these uh, texts are then you can use it but let me try something else if you do a snip from a card like this probably it will be looking all right you see it is much better right now at least it is readable you need to be mindful about the location and consider the limitation of the e-ink displays well if you would like to solve this problem from the root you can just use a home assistant team which has a bigger font that will solve all your problems then someone asked me if it is possible to make a modem monitor for their home internet modem and i think it would be possible for the most of them because at least modern ones have one web interface almost all of them do you all need to do is paste your url and click zip button and you need to of course enter your username and password and you need to save it to your browser because first i made the software to, to record your keyboard strokes as well but microsoft recognized my application as a security threat 
and I had to cancel out that function. So right now it only records your mouse movements, except the right click. You can scroll up, scroll down and click to the left button as well. Anyway, then you need to log in. After the login, you need to find the location which is interesting to you. Well, for this demonstration, I will just use the RAM allocation just to show how it is done. Again, right click and select the information that you find it interesting. This one doesn't look interesting, but well, please understand, I don't want to share the information on my modem. But yeah, you know how it is done now. Another idea was making a Bitcoin tracker. Also, this would work with any of the stock files. Also, you might create your own stock list like this and sign in to, for example, Yahoo Finance and you can get regular updates from the website. You need to copy the link of the website and paste it here. Open the website, again, right click and select a snip location it will send it to your price tag and this is the end result of it it will be updated when the time that you specified is reached right now i think i have a problem i have flashed quite a few of them and i really like the ideas that you gave me so i'm happy for that but maintaining those price tags would be a little bit problematic because as you see all of the applications that are working background have the same name and I don't know which one is controlling which price tag. If you also about like a quite reasonable amount of the price tag, you will end up the same trouble as well. But that's why I am telling it right now. So to fix it, you see you have your executable folder, the folder where your executable is staying. Basically, you can just copy the folder uh, to your location and change the name of the folder, for example, and you can just click on it and it will work as usual there will be no issues with the functionality whatsoever as you see it will appear with the name that you gave it to the application and managing all this price tag would be a lot easier for you if you do that i forgot who gave me this idea but this is the best idea ever for this price tag, I think, special thanks to the owner of this idea. There is something from the Google service, which is called Keep, Google Keep, and basically it works like a post-it notes. So you can take your notes and of course you need to fill in all the notes here, then take a snapshot out of it. It will work like a regular post-it note and also it can be edited online of course. Put it on the refrigerator and it will replace the post-it notes. Another cool thing I realized, you can actually use a magnet to hold them because of the battery connectors and actually put it in your refrigerator. You don't need even a double-sided tape or anything. So I guess I don't need these things anymore. While we are at it, I will also do this and get my morning schedule like this. So I will place this one to the bathroom. Luckily, there is a metal underneath cover to hold it. And you will see it will hold like that. And I can check my daily morning schedule from here from now on. And also in our town, they collect the garbage on specific dates and we also have to separate the garbage as well and basically if you miss up a day you are screwed your whole house become like a garbage house and it is very important to know the dates so you can also get the garbage collection dates from the website and it is the same you need to paste the website here uh, I don't need really a fast update on this one every 10 hour would be enough and check change and click snip button and get a snip out of it and this one will go to the garbage bin and also i attached a magnet to here as well so in case you open the garbage bin it will not fall over or anything also as a last part I would like to mention about the things that you can do if things go wrong. 
And first thing I could recommend you to, to use the actually real Python file. And of course, you need to have all the requirements installed on your computer. If you don't want to mess up with your own libraries, I recommend you to work with the virtual environment. I used Python 3.9, so I encountered some problems with the other versions of the Python. Keep that in mind. While working with the tool, you sometimes might mess up with the stuff. For example, you might have selected a wrong location and you didn't get the results that you wanted. And if that happens, you need to delete this variable point JSON file and it stores all the variables that you provided to the application. And next time you start at the application, you will see the software window and you can do everything from the start. And this will probably solve most of your problems. I really like working with this price tags and I think if you have a chance to talk with a market manager, you should ask them if they have broken price tags on their hand. So maybe they can give it those for free because basically they have no use for them and probably they just work fine and you can just repurpose them for your own purposes. And I should say I really enjoyed working with this price tags and also thanks for the ideas that you gave me. Because of your ideas, actually, I was able to make this video that long. Like always, if you like this video, don't forget to give a thumbs up. And see you next time.